Hey guys, welcome back to Nations and Nobles. We are actually traveling to Ori's marketplace because Ori hit us up and she wants more ice. Hello? Man! Hello. Hi, how are you? Um, I've been <laughs> Oh, that's, oh, well that's not what I expected. To hear, I'm sorry. Uh, it's fine. Uh, so you, you, so you, uh, wanted some ice? Yes, 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 yes. Please, I heard that's what polar bears might be interested in instead of uh, sand. So <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. I thought ice. I thought my ice might be a little more appetizing to live on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here's and some right here. Awesome. And you wanted sand. Yes. For all the sand and sand accessories. I think Beardo blew up my stuff. Like a, a, lo a lot of my stuff. Uh, Beardo blew up your stuff. Oh. Yeah, that's... Uh -oh. I can imagine how you would not be amazing with that news. Yeah. What stuff, what, what stuff do you mean? What stuff did Beardo blow up remember like my first starter starter base the one that looked really ugly oh uh, the one in the mountain with the, the cactus farm yeah that one mm -hmm. uh yeah that was completely blown up and the shop was completely oh. blown up uh the house was rummaged oh. through so are you having to make deliveries for everything now uh basically yeah uh, that's oh. been fun well <laughs> I mean, while you're here, I've got my market up and going, and it's, so far it's worked out well. All the nobles have been able to grab a shop and s sell things, and it's, it's not like a f official shop shop, but I mean, I have some, some empty ones if you, if you might be interested in just having a little pop-up shop somewhere. Until you get back on your feet, you know, to sell your, your, your ice. Honestly, that 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 would be fantastic. I uh, awesome. I don't. I haven't really had a place to sell my stuff, so yeah, yeah. No, I can show here. I'll show you. I'll show you the empty ones really quick. First, there's there's this one. It's like a watchtower type thing. It's mm -hmm. it's it's. There's a lot of ladders involved, but it you know. Okay. It's a thing. And then let's see. Oh, there's this one. I can I can move. Um, Felipe. Oh, never mind. That one's not... no. That occupied. <laughs> uh, that one's occupied for now. That's what the ice is for. It's fine. Oh, oh, over here, over here, over here. Walked right past it. There's also this one. Okay. It's kind of cool. It's got like a double. There's a fancy door. I don't know. It's just it's, it's cool. <laughs> there's there's this, and then there's also an upstairs too. Okay. Just it's it's the most roomy, so that might be nice since you don't, you don't, you know, you, you might need some extra space since you don't have a house and stuff right now, or you know, like you did, since you're getting started. Mm -hmm. It might be good to be able to store stock here and stuff. Was my that's where I was trying to go with that. <laughs> but yeah, so probably one of these I feel like would be the the best for you, but it's obviously up to you. I think my eyes uh, sizing up a specific shop over here, if that's okay with you. Yes, 100%, whichever one you want. Well, I think I'm taking this one then. All right, it's all yours. Thank you. But yeah, you just, you just, like, you can, there's some examples. Beardo has one. You're not too close to him, so that should be fine. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little place where we can maybe just, we can, we can stick to business since apparently not everybody's on the best term, supposedly. Uh, a neutral so. grounds, per se. Yes, there we go. That's, see, that's the word, Smith, I was looking for. Well, sweet. This worked out even fancier than I imagined. Thank you so much for the ice and enjoy your, uh, your new shop digs. I sh Where you will sell totally legal things. <laughs> uh, okay, okie dokie. I'll, I'll try. <laughs> I'm gonna just Michael Jackson out of here. If I, can, if I can find Bye, it. Man. Oh, that doesn't work if you're sneaking. Uh, <gasps> oh, that's fun knowledge. Bye, man. Have Bye. fun. <laughs> okay. Hmm. 
honestly, not a bad space at all. I guess the, the first thing I really should do is just get, get my stuff in here. Like, just don't worry about the decoration too much because I have kind of fallen behind on certain orders. So, uh, let, let me go back to my base and fill that up. With the help of Blink, we actually managed to get everything in here relatively quickly. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we have things like gravel, ice, snow, all kinds of stuff. Um, people have been DMing me uh, quite, quite a bit, uh, and I've been DMing other people quite a bit. So, um, yeah, it's probably best to just have this stuff out and about. Oh, I guess you guys are probably wondering why uh how we managed to get so much dark prismary and we don't really have a uh, ink farm or do we <laughs> i've actually uh been working on this with blank off to the side uh, but uh yeah let's go check out a little ink sack farm that we've made so here is the squid farm um blank me and also baloo are going to be using this since uh He's been wanting to, to sell ink sacks directly. I'm not really interested in selling ink sacks, but I do want to be able to make Dark Prismarine. Uh, but yeah, oh, wow, he just happened to join. His ears must have been burning. We've cleared out this area quite a bit, and um, I didn't realize when I started building this that you were going to have to clear out a bunch of water. And you guys are probably wondering how I managed to do that. I believe it's somewhere around here. Yes, I know this place is a mess. I apologize. Ah, here it is. We have gathered a bunch of sponge from uh, surrounding ocean monuments. Um, I'm hoping at some point I can uh, rent these out to people so that they can uh, use it for a limited amount of time. And the reason it's limited is because th these things are not very easy to replace. So I'd rather just have it rented. And it's very rare for people to actually use these things as decoration blocks. So I think having them rentable is uh, much more pow- Oh, shoot. I completely forgot that I uh, needed to gear up. I guess I got so caught up in uh, doing, you know, <laughs> moving stuff that uh, I kind of forgot about that. You know what? Let's let's smelt that up real quick. This is kind of weird putting in this much ancient debris at one time. <laughs> this is pretty satisfying, not going to lie. <laughs> so the first two things I really should get another right. Oh, wait. Oh, right. I completely forgot. I need uh, the, the, the templates. Funny enough, I think I actually know a place where I can buy those. So if we go back towards spawn a bit in the nether and go down, there's actually been a little shop uh, set up down there. I don't know who it belongs to, but I mean, if it sells the right stuff, I don't particularly care. Okay, at the moment, looks like we're only going to be able to do five, which I mean, that's... I was thinking of doing on my pickaxes, but I thought I was going to have enough to do, you know, my sword as well. I think instead I'm going to do all my armor and then my sword because, I mean, the reason we got so much in the first place was so that we could protect ourselves. So, yeah, let's... Oh, wait. Yeah, no. <laughs> let's make our way back to the igloo. I guess we do have enough diamonds to uh, do, like, a blue trim. Do we, do we have any good bits of trim? It'd have to be these, right? Because, I mean, I've been kind of embracing the, the frozen ocean. Um, but I guess I would want to see what it looks like first. What, what does that look like? So tie it on the helmet and boots and then coast for the chest plate and leggings, I think is what we're doing. Oh, that's sick. I, I like that. <laughs> I, I, I like that. I'll take it. That being said, uh, we are completely out of diamonds. 
So, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go on a mining trip for a bit. So yeah, it's a little bit later and, uh, the shulker box monster has only gotten worse. Um, <laughs> I think I do have a plan for what I want to do for my base now. And, uh, it actually includes the ice farm. I don't know about you, but I, uh, I've been kind of bothered about this, you know, floating for a good bit now. So, I thought of the idea of why don't we just make our base underneath this and it just eventually leads up to this and, like, the, the ice farm is the roof? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I might switch out the, the deep slate with something else because I uh, don't really have this color in mind, a little too edgy, but uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to go get some snow and uh, make an outline of this place, maybe. Hello? Oh. Man? Oh. Hello. How you doing? Kind of hard to find you out here in the middle of uh, the ocean. Uh, yeah, um, I, I guess, yeah, I, to... I, I, I guess you don't know what really happened, do you? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. What happened? Uh, well, uh, someone basically blew up most of my stuff at spawn. So... Wait, what? Um, do you, any idea who? And, like, I, I'm guessing it's Spirito? I was about to say, yeah, Beardo probably. I mean, if you ever want to get back at him, just let me know. I'll be there for you. Okie doke. Um, but, uh, uh, do you need anything, or? Yeah, no, I mean, I guess the whole reason I'm here, I'm not just, you know, visiting. As you're in the ice out here, I know you've been farming a lot of ice as well. I could use a bunch of ice. Okay. I just said ice a lot of times, <laughs> but yes. So, like, packed ice, normal ice? Any, any, on all of it. Okay. Honestly. Uh, funny enough, I actually do have three shulkers of ice right up here. Uh, oh, perfect. Um, what would you be willing to to give for it? Well, I have a lot of gunpowder. I know that's pretty useful for rockets and TNT. No, yeah. And um, especially with Beardo now being a target, you know, you could mm. use that gunpowder for some <laughs> boom boom stuff. I don't know if I'll go that drastic, but, um, yeah, the gunpowder will hey, I can do it for you if you want. <laughs> okay, perfect. But, uh, yeah, I'll give you this shulker. We could, uh, do a little trade. Sweet. And, yeah, you could use that for all of your needs. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm happy with that. coming perfectly. So, what do you need all the ice for, anyways? Eh, some personal <laughs> projects. <laughs> Howdy. Silver came out of nowhere. Well, thanks for the ice. Enjoy the gunpowder. I yeah, will uh, leave you to it. All right. Ciao. See ya. Okay, that'll be pretty handy, but the all the more reason for us to get more chests in here. Where am I even going to put it? This is why I need a base. <laughs> okay, so what I'm about to show you will probably be the single biggest project that I will be doing for this world. Um, so yeah, so a lot of snow shoveling later, here we are. <laughs> now obviously, uh, it's a little rough around the edges, even in terms of shape, like obviously there's some lines that still need to be drawn, uh, the top there is clearly not finished, uh, I, I, I just need to figure out a shape to do at the top of this, but in general, we've got a pretty good idea on the size of everything. For reference, the igloo and the AFK spot is right over here. I was actually originally planning to make this side the front, but partway through it, I decided that it would be best to have the front facing all of the ice and whatnot, just because it looks cooler, and also the the shape was just kind of generally leaning towards that anyway by accident. I've just been 
like sitting here shoveling for probably a combined hour, I would say. I'm not entirely certain there, but you know, it's it's something like that. Uh, j and that's just to get all of this here, so I have no idea how long it's going to take to fill it all in. But I guess I should probably disclaim that this is probably never going to be finished. Um, and that's just because that's the way I like to play. I like to have what I like to call an infinity project, something that, you know, never truly stops. And th that's just because I, I don't know, I just like to have that one constant thing that I can always work on, if that makes any sense. I might do the exterior, but I don't think I'm ever going to completely fill up the interior or do, or like completely fill out all of these decks, I guess I would call them. But yeah, d don't be surprised if it ends up unfinished. As you can probably see, there is one spot that is a little more than a wireframe, which is this little waterway going into the side of this tower thingy. Basically, while I was making this like set of basically floating stairs down here, kind of connecting these two steps, I thought it would be really cool to have water kind of falling behind it. So I put a bunch of water up here and then I decided I want to the water to be coming somewhere in this vague direction. Funny enough, this tower was originally supposed to be completely like straight up and down, but I thought this looked a little more interesting and it allows the water to come from somewhere interesting. Like it's actually, I need to let the water go. It's basically ready to go. I just hadn't done that for whatever reason. Yeah. Here you go. So, obviously, I haven't let the water loose into whatever these corridors are. They are obviously not finished. I have not figured out a final design for this yet. Uh, but I was basically procrastinating on trying to figure out a shape for the top of that there. And then I just ended up doing this. <laughs> And uh, as you can probably tell, I still haven't figured out a shape for this. Uh, maybe I will in the future, but that'll have to see because it's kind of a weird rectangular shape. So figuring out a design that will work for it will be interesting, uh, especially considering that I'm trying to like do a semi-futuristic themed build, so... I'm obviously going to, like for the centerpiece, I'm obviously going to have to do something, like something that's somewhat intricate. So the main thing I want to figure out right now, and the reason I started building this in the first place, the main reason at least, is that I got to figure out my storage area. I am not entirely sure on where to do it, because obviously I want it to be in a place that, you know, won't look ugly or out of place, basically but I also want it to be very functional and easy to get to without having to spam like 15 rockets. So yeah, I'm gonna hook up with Blink for a moment because I mean, I don't know if we're gonna need two different storage rooms or what because we're two different people living in the same area. So yeah, let's get him on for a moment. Last I remember, he flew to over here, so... I don't know if we'll be able to find him or not, but we'll see. Oh, there we are. At least, at least I think that's his place. E, yo. Oh, hello, Sloth Boy. What brings you here? It's not Sloth Boy. Anyways, um, so we, I, I've gotten a kind of a basic outline for the base. And... Oh, good. I, I'm in need of more space. You see, I was just doing some experiments up on the third floor, and uh, it, it didn't end well. But there is no third floor. Oh, huh, so it erased it from time as well as space. I gotta write this down. Uh, uh, Interesting. Anyways. A anyways, you were saying? Yeah, so I have a, 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 an outline for the base covered, so if you want to follow Spectacular. me... 
This is certainly going to have enough space. Yeah, that that's what I was hoping for. And uh, basically, the, the the first thing that we really need to nail down is uh, storage. We 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 need we desperately storage. need storage. So, um, considering hmm. the um, the decent size of this place, I feel like we should have enough room for both of us to have like a main storage oh, easily, room. Easily, easily. So. Easily. I mean, I'm gonna be real with you. I was, I was just gonna put mine underground with all my, with all my other crazy stuff that we're not going to mention. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, so yeah, no, put, put yours wherever. Besides that, since I have you here, are there any like major rooms that you want to have topside? Well, I, th I think maybe on one of the on the tops of uh, you know, some of these things, maybe we could put like some sort of garden or something. Okay. Like, I I got the feeling here that you wanted to go for sort of a futuristic vibe. We can make it like sort of like a digital garden, quote unquote. Oh, that could be interesting. Uh, we, we, we could definitely come up with something. Yeah. Okay. I like that. You know, there's, there's plenty of room for them for sure. I don't know what a digital garden would look like, but uh, I'm I'm willing to find. Oh, out. Oh, you know, glass trees, chrome grass. You know, everything's chrome in the future. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I was personally thinking of having my storage area up here. I mean, this is one of the entrances. You want a throne room in this thing, right? I mean, like, like look at the thing, it's huge. You, you would want a throne room, right? Yeah, probably, I guess. Picture this. You fly in through the waterfall right into the throne room. Oh, okay. Uh, J just an idea. Can you, like fly and then like hit around the spot where you think you would like s go through the entrance like behind the waterfall I, think I honestly thought that far ahead oh uh, well I yes yeah that was your first mistake um <laughs> but the thing is I don't really ah crap <laughs> apparently you don't think much really in general guardrails up here <laughs> really need some guardrails up here Bruh. um it's a giant drop. Yeah, would, How did you not see it? You just walked off. I, I mean, dude, look at it. It's all ice. It's all blue. It's all the same color. I, I have no depth perception. You know this. Okay. You've got more than enough room on the inside of this thing to easily negotiate around any potential um, restrictions on space. The basement was just, for me, was going to be entirely underground. It's just a matter of where the entrance is for me, because you know, okay. if we have wardens down there, I, I don't want any too much noise pollution. In fact, it's probably good this thing's so high up so you won't hear them. <laughs> um, okay. So, crap, where would the entrance be? That's a good question. You let me worry about, like, any off-premises entrance and exits. Um... All right, but as for the main entrance from the base itself, I I don't want it on the outside. I want it to be deep within. Okay, but I think I'll figure out the logistics of that, like once everything's built. I'm probably gonna start working on my storage area. I'll probably try to get to the first floor here, or at least you know, getting the basic layout of the first floor so that right. we can plan around that once. Uh, maybe a bit later, but I desperately need storage. I don't know about you. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that that's you need a staging area, and you're just gonna make the staging area the, you know, the place that has your storage anyway, so you don't have to move it later. Makes perfect sense. I don't know. It's like that temporal experiment I was doing really messed things up in my head. I'm not entirely sure what timeline I'm in right now. I gotta figure that out once I get my my equipment set up downstairs. But it's not a big deal for right now. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yes. Anyway, why, why don't you figure that out for, real quick, <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna start laying out the basic idea for my storage room. <laughs> All right, that works for me. Good good luck, sloth boy. All right, it's not sloth boy. It's sloth man. Okay. Anyways, so yeah, as you heard we're actually thinking of doing our storage area up here and that is mostly due to two main reasons three two two so yeah first off here's the thing 
I wanted this to be in a central location and I wanted to be able to get to the rest of my base from my storage area. And I didn't want to use too many rockets. Now you guys are probably thinking if your storage area is on the top of your build, how are you going to get to it without using a crap ton of rockets? Well, I have something in mind. So I was thinking that at least for now, I can use a waystone and just kind of have waystones everywhere. It's really expensive on levels and is not a permanent solution. But for later, uh, I'm hoping to set up a ender pearl stasis chamber. Hi, blank. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, hopefully we can get that set up in the near future. In order for us to get any sort of pearl stasis chamber, I need to lay this place out first and actually get it somewhat running, have a good idea of where redstone's going to be, because I do want to do a uh, automatically, like, automatic storage system setup, which, I mean, not too hard, it's just very time-consuming, resource-consuming, and, you know, so on and so forth. So why don't we get like a basic layout of the floor plan first. <laughs> what the? <laughs> it's a little, it's a little rhino. Not a rhino, uh, triceratops? <laughs> Uh, oh, 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 so, so Ori, uh, messaged me like a bit earlier and, um, told me that they left something and I guess, uh, I guess they, they had a really good point. I, I, I guess Blank had a good point of like all the blues kind of mixing together because I did not see this until now. How long has this been here? Have I have I just like missed it for like a super long time? I I am the blind. I I apologize. <laughs> this is really cute. So, what am I planning for the storage system? Well, I was originally planning on doing your typical just item sorter with a bunch of chests. But then I realized that A, that'd be kind of boring, and B, there's a particular member on this server who would probably lag out pretty hard anytime they went near the building. So <laughs> instead, I'm going to actually be uh, taking inspiration from uh, what Obi did in here. I don't, I don't know what video he used to reference for this, but basically, uh, it's stored in a bunch of chests back here. We're going to be using barrels. And uh, they essentially just kind of tell you how much it is filled up. And then you access it all via this barrel at the bottom, which we're going to be using a shulker. Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, it basically just uses a bunch of comparators, shoves it into the side. Uh, we're going to be doing something a little different. And to be honest, it's not in a good way, but... We'll, we'll we'll improve it once 1.21 comes out. I hope you guys like the front door. I I think it's still gonna need some work, mostly just up here. I I think this general design is kind of nice. I might need to add some color, just to give it some pop. We'll worry about that later. We just desperately need storage now. <laughs> but yeah, this is one module. As you can see, I did condense it down into what's essentially a t a two block wide area because keep in mind this one's going to be also using this block so probably or i can I, I i got reversed but hopefully you know what i mean so for the rest of this it's it's very rudimentary and to be quite frank i'm not super proud of it basically in an effort to condense this down into a two block wide area i kind of had to make some sacrifices so say I, what, what, which one would be good to show this off? Probably like this one. If I throw items in here, you'll see that it will actually do multiple lights. And when it comes to this squashed of a space, 
I really can't do much, and for the moment, I am willing to sacrifice a little bit of accuracy in order to just get this into a closer sp space. And also, I actually do have a idea on how to actually bring the accuracy back once 1.21 comes out, which will essentially be using copper bulbs. I was planning on doing that for this anyway, considering that it would go with the color scheme way better. So uh, we'll see when that happens, but I mean, it is still technically functional now, so I'm just going to keep it like that. As you can probably tell, in order to keep building these, we need a lot of hoppers. A lot of my redstone seems to use a lot of hoppers. Now, I do have a couple of stacks of iron blocks, but with how many hoppers we're using here, I don't think that's going to be enough. So, I decided to ask Yevo on how much a shulker of iron blocks would be. And honestly, it kind of surprised me. It was less expensive than I thought, but I, I knew it was still going to be expensive. And it is four stacks of diamonds. So yeah, kind kind of kind of steep, kind of steep. Now, funny enough, we at, we're actually fairly close. We're just nine, like thirteen short, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, we could just do your typical mining session and probably get it done. But I want to show off a little trick. But in order to do that, we're going to need Blank's help because um, let's just say it's a little dangerous. While you're gone, I'm actually going to start this. Go ahead. Ju just in case. 59 is enough. 59 is more than enough, I think. I'll, I'll let you know what's safe for you to come back. Alright, I'm, I'm like, I've got my finger on the button, so whenever. Okay, I think you're good. Okay. Now we punch. Let me eat. Oh, oh, you came too close, you came too close. There's honestly a lot more chill than I thought it'd be. Yeah, no. Um, once you... Like, the beginning is kind of, like, slightly stressful, but once you actually get it going, perfectly fine. Yo, what the heck? Now, here's an experiment I want to try. Will it work with snowballs? Oh, that gives you a pretty good boon of speed. I'm trying to play with the speed a bit. So next time, I need to bring, like, just, a, like, a, a pretty solid stack of, like, snow blocks. But for those of you watching at home, essentially, what you do with this, uh, I, I guess you can technically do this without a partner, but if you really want the deep slate, I, re I really recommend it. But essentially, you just make sure the weather stays below half health and for every single time they mine, you just hit them again and they'll keep mining and it's just this nice feedback loop here. So hopefully that explains it. I, I know some people have had trouble doing this before. Okay, we have Yevo's four stacks of diamonds and now we gotta head over to his place to drop them off and pick up the iron um so i did some math and apparently i'm going to need 640 hoppers uh yeah and uh also what was it like three and a half stacks of barrels <laughs> um yeah it, it's it's uh certainly a project all right funny enough yevo's the only person who doesn't have a waste stone at this point in time so uh, i'm still using the silver snow speedway which uh kind of nice to use every now and again these signs are still here <laughs> I, oh oh that's different i was about to say i wonder what yevo's been up to but um apparently a decent bit Ooh, we got this place over here that I don't know how to get. Oh, there's there's stairs. There's stairs. Okay. What's over here? Ooh, nice, nice, nice. I have no idea what it's supposed to be for. Maybe like stones. I'm glad that I don't have to go through powdered snow anymore. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I hope they're good horses. I I, I actually do kind of want to get a good horse. Getting a good fast horse. Ooh. I like the, what is this, beehives and, like, bookshelves? I forget what they were. Who's there? Oh, hi. Is that Van? Hey. Howdy. How I you doing? I see you found the horse farm. Yeah. I'm doing I... well, doing well.
Uh, this is nice. I like this. I see you've been busy. Thank you. Thank you. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I heard you are uh, interested in finding a horse. I can uh, definitely arrange something like that for you. Maybe another day at the minute. I am most, sure, sure. I am mostly looking for iron. Um, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of iron, like 640 hoppers worth of iron. Oh, what? Can I ask what you're using those for? Storage. Oh, gee. Okay. Oh, my God. That's going to be a massive storage room. Okay. I think a shulker's worth of iron blocks. So, I mean, it is a lot of iron, right? Yeah, you know, it's yeah. It's blocks. It's not just ingots. Yeah, okay. no. Why I, is this horse getting in the way? Oh, my God. He's buddy. like, I want the attention pet me. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> this one, too. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, I think a shulker's worth of iron blocks, including the shulker as well. I mean, a couple stacks of diamonds, I think. I mean, I'd say four is a pretty good amount. Um, I, I don't know what the competition is kind of asking for. Granted, I am the only iron yeah, supplier. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do. But what do you think? I, I did just do some uh, wither mining and uh, mm -hmm. I've got four stacks of diamonds for you right here. Four stacks of diamonds works for you. I mean, that works for me. All All right. Right. Do you have them ready right now? No, oh, yeah, right here. Oh my god, you came prepared. Jeez. This is what I love to see. All right. Thanks, man. Bye. But well, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Come on. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There you go. Oh, you that is a, a wonderful sight to see. Well, as you could probably imagine, I uh, I have some redstone to get to, so <laughs> see you around. I bet you do. Yeah. Safe travels. You too. That is fantastic. And we have a horse uh, purchase to look forward to. Hmm. Ooh. Yeah, Yeva's gonna have a problem with zombie piglins. I'm gonna have to show him a little strat to keep these off of hand, including uh, maybe possibly turtle eggs and powdered snow. He should be able to supply himself with that. We have actually far more than what we need. I estimated that I would need approximately over five stacks of iron blocks, and we've got quite a bit more than that. So. Uh, hopefully we should be able to carry this supply into the future. Ooh, it's nice to see that this is still working fine and dandy. Been a while since I've used that. Uh, it, it is slightly depressing that the Silver Snow Speedway kind of got outclassed almost instantly. But it's it's still nice to have. It's still nice to go feast. <laughs> so I went to AFK for a moment. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll admit it was a bit more than a moment. Uh, I went to go eat lunch, and I ended up here. <laughs> I, um, I, I saw Blank, like, putting these, like, last couple of glass blocks in here, and just, like... Eat. He even put in like the ice and lava bucket. He made, he literally remade the skyblock for whatever reason. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, let, let me just get back to work on that. So everything is finished. And uh, no, it's, it's not just partially finished like I tend to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the, the design we decided to go for originally. Uh, this room just had like deep slate and warped wood, so it was just like a black and turquoise color. But then I realized it was being like, especially with the leaves, it was just being a little too monochromatic. So I decided to add in the crimson wood over here. Originally, these buttons were uh, warped, and I was actually thinking of switching out the these trapdoors for crimson as well. But I saw that from a side profile and I was like, mm, may maybe that's a little too much because from this side, you don't really see that turquoise too much. So instead, I decided to put trap doors down here, which just seems a lot more balanced and it kind of makes for a nice little outline of the magenta, I, I, I guess. And also, I decided in order to bring that out a little bit more, I would add some pillars over here to also help break up the deep slate over here. Now, you might have noticed that I put all of the blocks on the floor. Originally, I was thinking of putting like the item frames like around here 
uh, around where the barrels used to be. But then I realized that would kind of go against the whole <laughs> FPS saving thing. So, yeah, I decided to go against that. Uh, and with these doors, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, these these walls like that one, that one and that one, these gave me the hardest time in terms of just decision making. For this one, I if you might notice the, the curvature of this wing is kind of centered with this entrance. And that was on purpose, just to make sure that if I'm coming in from this way, uh, it's not too hard to come in and whatnot. So yeah, there was that. But then I decided to take that curve, flip it like 180 degrees, not even reversing it. I just got this shape. And honestly, I kind of like it. It's a little weird. That is, that is for certain, but I kind of do like it. And I decided to make the, the edge of the entrance pop out a little bit by using the walls. There's actually walls over there too, but it's kind of covered by leaves now. With the other two, I actually experimented with something I've seen a couple of times, but have never actually tried for myself, and it's utilizing uh, stairs in this fashion. So basically, uh, the stair that will symbolize the edge will have like this indent on both sides and you do that by having another stair over here and um in most situations i found it to look a little odd but because everything is so dark anyways you don't really notice it that much as well as the fact that you know this wall already has a bunch of like inconsistencies and holes so it honestly fits straight in you barely even notice it and uh, same with this one, but I, I might use this more in the future. I, I kind of see the appeal of it. It does allow you to like sh sharpen the shape a little bit, but um, for the most part, I, I, I think I'm just going to leave it to deep slate, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what I do in the future. But yeah, as I mentioned earlier, there was a lot of deep slate at the beginning. Like, the, the ceiling was mostly deep slate, this wall had partial deep slate, the floor was deep slate, these were deep slate, and I think I managed to, like, tone it back to a somewhat reasonable level while still making sure it dominates the picture, if that makes any sense. Because, I mean, this this is a fairly neutral color, you can do a lot with a neutral color, um, but it was getting to be a bit much. So, yeah, I just ended up going with the, the leaf ceiling. I, I apparently like leaf ceilings, I don't know why. Now, to show you the actual redstone bits, we're actually going to pick up this shulker box right here that has some items that I usually have a lot of in this world. So, pick that one up. And we're going to go over to this station. If you haven't noticed, I actually ripped out two modules to fit this in because I didn't really think about this much beforehand. Um, that was kind of weird, but anyways, so essentially you pick up a, a, a shulker box that has items in it, you place it against this, and it gets put into a shulker loader, and that light will go on, which will tell us that it is indeed in progress. When putting a shulker box in front of the blue ice here, a comparator will unlock the hopper below and activate the piston to send the shulker into the system. And down here, when a shulker, which is like right below this piston, you can't see it because I wanted to keep it from falling out. When it makes its way into the unloading station, it locks this clock over here to keep uh, dispensing more shulkers. Uh, while it unlocks this lock T-flip-flop to essentially get the piston ready to extend very briefly once this comparator turns off, which me meaning that the, the shulker would be empty. So, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm not very good at explaining redstone, am I? If we do some parkour over here, we actually have a six block hopper clock that essentially locks the hopper underneath the shulker, just so the storage for the item spitter does not overflow. Now, why is this a problem? Well, the reason this is a concern is because if everything is full when the shulker turns into an item, there is a chance for it to despawn before the hopper below picks it up. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, you may have noticed from the slow ticking that I actually have the item spitter quite slow as well. Now, the reason for this 
if I can get up here, is that I actually made a recent discovery that when using the water method for uh, the item sorters, um, it... Okay, how do I explain this? You need to keep all of the items far enough apart so that the hoppers for the item sorters have time to properly pick it up. So yeah, as you can see, they're very evenly distributed. They aren't stacking into each other like they sometimes like to do, which I believe is there to save lag. I, I don't know what Minecraft does and work for that, or maybe it's just make messes easier to clean. I don't know. But all I know is that you, you need to keep these items separate. Therefore, why the, the timing between spitting is... A bit further apart if we go back down again if i can make the shot oh there's there's a skeleton up there um there are actually two signals that go up to the redstone lamp above now the first one is when there uh, <laughs> this is oh no the first one is coming from the shulker now if the shulker is activating this it the redstone lamp above will just be solid, it will just stay on. However, if there are no shulker boxes left and it's just the dispenser doing the work, this is actually the signal that will uh, primarily go to it. And what that does is it basically tell me whenever the shulker boxes are done and they will be returned to me before too, too long. From here, it's pretty simple. The items that get spat out from the item spitter get pushed up against this chest and go down the line. Now, the reason for the chest is basically it makes it so that the items are between these two blocks. So it can be picked up by the hopper while also being able to be transported by the water. Now, funny enough, uh, this actually crosses the leaves a bit. Uh, but as you can see, I used the little leaf trick that I used the last episode just so from below you don't see it as much. In fact, I don't think you can really see it at all. Like you could be you can barely see it you can see a little bit of white and the the reason i didn't use ice is basically just so it doesn't look so stinking obvious from below and i i think i accomplished that now with the item sorters and the storage system itself you will notice that there is a crap ton of composters around and i know it does look a little silly but there is a good reason for it so i'm not gonna get into the specifics as to all the technical reasons this works but essentially th these composters being above the hoppers saves on a lot of lag if you have a hopper that you don't really plan on picking anything up from above putting a composter on it is really good especially on a server because it will essentially make the server check for things less with the hoppers, if that makes any sense. I know I showed this trick in my last single player video, but I find this trick quintessential for any hopper reliant system, especially on a server, and I highly recommend it. If there are items that aren't picked up by the item sorters, which is most likely shulkers and also other items that I forgot were in the shulkers, uh, they will end up going into this little hole and going to that hopper down there which essentially will end up into this barrel, uh, which will essentially allow us to pick our shulkers back up. Now, I, I apologize if I lost some of you there, but that's how all this works. It's a mess, but it's my mess, and I love it. <laughs> By the way, I want to give some thanks to Baloo, Grizz, and Blank for helping me out with some of the materials. You guys haven't met Baloo yet, but he's joined our crew somewhat recently and now leads Ursa Rosa. He sold us the gray wool that we used here and also a bit more wool that we're probably going to be using down the line. We also traded with Grizz to get some of the spruce leaves and Blank helped a lot with the warped wood and the quartz that helped us get all these comparators and observers and whatnot. So yeah, who, who, yeah. <laughs> wow, huge props to those three. Now that we actually have a little bit going on here, I want to finally officially start my nation here. Welcome to the nation of Swagtopia. <laughs> I, 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 I think there has been murmurings of that name uh, for a little while now, but yeah, it's good to finally officially have it out there. And, uh, yeah, I know it's the goofiest name possible, 
but considering what all the themes are and what really inspired this whole thing, I think it is probably the most appropriate name that I can give it. Uh, <laughs> Because, I mean, I, I, I want to have fun with this. This is going to be, this entire nation is basically going to be my glorified fun house. Which, I, I think that's just how I treat bases in general. <laughs> so, not much different there. What's next for Swagtopia? Well, first off, we need more storage. I, yes, I know, we literally just spent like half an episode figuring out storage. Um, but here's the thing. This is just bulk storage. There's still a lot of little odds and ends that we really need to, you know, utilize or get stored at least. Like down here, we have improved the storage problem like a decent bit, but it's not quite there yet. There's a lot of stragglers and a lot of random items that I'm not always going to have a lot of, so it's kind of... Eh. So I gotta I gotta figure out a good solution for all of this. But yeah, so we, we need to get more storage. I think I'm gonna have more on this top floor. Well, kind of top floor for now. S second from top floor. But yeah, what I'm thinking is that I'm going to use this as like a little transitionary hallway. Maybe maybe a small cafe. That would be really fun. Like like a lobby cafe type thing. That could be really fun, and maybe like a, a, a big window right here, another big window there, um, maybe, a, a, maybe a barista over here, I don't know, some, something like that. And over to here, we will essentially have a transition into the rest of our storage, which will be tucked underneath all of this. It's not going to be like as tall or as grand. Oh, it's, it's thunderstorming. Got to sleep. So other than storage, there have been two things that I have generally been thinking at on doing. Uh, the first one being planning out the mega base a bit more. I, I, the next episode, I definitely want to try to get where the basement's going to be just so Blank doesn't have to, you know, stop in his tracks and, you know, he can do whatever he wants. But other than that... There is actually another thing that I have been thinking of doing, and that is planning out the city. Yes, a, a, a city. Th this is not. This is not it. I'm actually planning on having a city over, you know, at least a decent bit of the frozen ocean here. And yeah, I, I <laughs> the likelihood of me getting this all finished is basically zero. <laughs> But I, 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 it just sounds fun to me. I, I, I want to I wanna do it. I want to see how far I can get. I actually want you guys to uh, comment down below and make a choice. Do you guys want me to start planning out the base a bit? Or, you know, at least do more than figure out where the basement is. Or do you guys want me to really start cracking down on the layout of the city here? Now, there's not going to be a lot done that's pretty either way because I mean it's just planning it's essentially going to be the same as this just a, a giant wireframe which may, maybe maybe as a callback to this maybe I should do a building that's like mostly a wireframe and like glass or something I don't know those are the two choices I know I haven't really been doing the um, you decide type thing which I mean is partially what nations and nobles is all about but um, there was a point where I kind of had to railroad the story a little bit just so I can get things going. So now that we're actually at a place where we can, you know, sit back, relax and just kind of take it at our own pace. Now I can have you guys involved a bit more and uh, that's a good feeling. But yeah, uh, comment down below, whatever you want to do there. Um, speaking of comments, comments of the day. <laughs> This one is by Count Grizzly. We love Linus. Rest in peace, the little foxy. Yeah, you guys, I, I, I got a lot of support for Linus on the last episode, and I'm really glad <laughs> the item sword is still going. Um, I, I really appreciate that. Um, but Linus actually has a pretty significant story around him long before uh, nations and nobles and I've just kind of whenever I get a fox in any world I just kind of name him Linus and it all goes back to a server called Kafla 
where I kind of had that typical, you know, don't mess with my pet arc. <laughs> it, it, it was somewhat lore based too, but it was more heavily inspired by D and D than you know a uh, a broader type of storytelling. If that makes any sense, there was a whole story with Lioness, and ever since then, I've just kind of grown an attachment with foxes and you know Lioness, and it, 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 it's just a whole thing. And I I like to have Lioness around when I can, but uh, this time it didn't quite work out you can you can see his statue in the distance over there but yeah uh there were a lot of things planned in that video linus was the only thing that was like, completely unplanned like i happened to grab linus on the side i was he i was wondering if he if he'd even be in the episode um in the first place but once i committed to that i decided you know make bring him over you know a whole thing but him falling off the edge was not planned at all. And I, I think you guys could probably tell. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the, the reaction I had, that was completely genuine. <laughs> uh, I, I still feel bad about it. And I... I mean, I've I, I've been like asked about from some of the nobles that like, oh, maybe you could get like a second Linus. And it's just like, no, it's not the same. I... It's just I, I I got I gotta take an L and honestly I should probably take it as a lesson learned because I feel like there were several things in that situation that I could have done or handled a little bit better and I think that's what Minecraft's all about is just learning uh, whether it be redstone or building or you know doing whatever and I don't think <laughs> I can't believe that I'm making an example of Linus as like the larger scope of Minecraft. How did I even get here? <laughs> I feel like with Minecraft, sometimes you just got to go and do it. I, I feel like some people get a little too caught up in trying to plan and figure things out. And I do that to a degree as well. But as of recently, I've been trying to just pull the trigger more and fully commit. And then if I make mistakes, I'll just learn from them and uh, think of th uh, just think about it next time. So, yeah, uh, I think that will close off the episode nicely. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you going through my my redstone rambles and my Linus rambles and my Kafla rambles and the and and, uh, and <laughs> all of that. And I, I really appreciate uh, everybody that's been watching, I, I much, much love, <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for watching and have a good one.